Today we're still looking at the books in Christianity and Islam and we're going to focus on corruption and in the last episode we kind of teased the fact that Muslims look at our Bible and say it's been corrupt. Um, you know there's there's the fingerprints of man all over it, we have the perfect word of Allah. When they see that our Bible contradicts fundamental parts of the Quran, they say this cannot be the word of God, you have corrupted it. Ultimately, one example would be the fact that in the Quran, Jesus does not die and is not crucified. Allah made it appear to look like that. And if you think that he died, you have no knowledge. Um, that's basically what it says in Surah 4, 157, chapter 4 of the Quran, Ayah 157. And so there is a massive contradiction between the two books. And so the obvious claim for the later book is that this book has been corrupted. It makes sense to say, well, actually your book came later and the Quran has been corrupted. And there's several problems with accusing the Bible of, of being corrupted in the Quran. First of all, because it tells us as Christians, the Quran speaks to Christians, and it calls us as Christians to stand on our text. It says in Surah 5, chapter 5, verse 68 of the Quran, O people of the scripture, that's the Jews and the Christians, you stand on nothing until you uphold the law of the Torah, the law of the gospel, and what has been revealed to you. And if that's the case, then I should be standing on the gospel, should I not? And it also says um, a couple of verses earlier that as Christians, we should judge by the gospel. And if I am judging by my gospel, and Jesus dies in the gospel and is raised, then the fact that that doesn't happen in the Quran leads me to judge that the Quran, has, the Quran is not a book from God. And so in terms of Bible corruption, this is the claim, and it's made because the Bible completely contradicts it. It's made for another reason too, and that reason is found in chapter seven of the Quran, verse 157. And in that chapter, it says that you will find Muhammad mentioned in the Torah and mentioned in the gospel. And so the fact that Muslims are having difficulty finding Muhammad in the Torah and the Gospel leads them to think that our Bible has been corrupted. Um, there are some verses where Muslims say, well, uh, Muhammad is the Holy Spirit and this is where he's been found. Um, but obviously that's not the case. I've really struggled to find Muhammad in the Torah and the Gospel. And I'm sure as you've been reading the Bible, have any of you found Muhammad in the Torah and in the Gospel? No, no, I didn't think so. The reason is simply because he's not there. And that issue, the fact that the Quran is wrong on that, leads them to accuse our Bible that it's been corrupted. And this leads to bigger problems because when we talk about Bible corruption or when scholars in Christianity talk about Bible corruption, they're talking about manuscript errors. And as we know, 99% of those cannot be translated outside the Greek. They don't have any significant difference at all on the doctrine. I mean. Um, we still have the doctrine of God, doctrine of sin, doctrine of salvation, doctrine of man. I mean, all those stand um, and they're not at all changed by manuscript variants. But when Muslims are accusing the Bible of being corrupted, they're not talking about really manuscript differences. Sometimes they are, but what they're saying or what Islam is saying is that the message has changed. In the Bible, God comes to earth several times. We'll talk about that later on. The Quran, Allah never comes to earth. Obviously, Muslims are thinking, well, the Bible has been corrupted. So even technical terms like Bible corruption mean something different in Christianity and Islam. And so there's, that's just another thing to think about.